Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the rotopros.com best DFS show that just happens to come out around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. This is another EPL breakdown for Match Week 33. Saturday, April 6, 2019. Small three-game slate, not a lot of skill, lot, not, lot, not a lot of names, and not a lot of salary. So you're going to basically be able to do whatever you want. So yeah, let's just jump into this straight away. First game of the slate, we have Burnley making the trip from way up north all the way down south. A huge trip to play Bournemouth. We have Leicester making a really quick trip to play Huddersfield Town. And we have Crystal Palace making the trip from London all the way up north to play Newcastle. So yeah, let's just jump into this straight away. As always, the first game of the slate, we have Burnley traveling to Bournemouth and we have two really low form teams coming into this game actually uh, Burnley have won only one of their previous five games and it was their last game versus Wolves they haven't won in back to back away games they've won only three of their 16 away games this season and they've lost nine of those 16 away and eight of their previous away games they've actually conceded at least twice so Burnley for the record, are not a very good away team, and they do a lot of their damage at home. And conversely, the same can be said for Bournemouth. However, Bournemouth are also coming into this in really bad form. They've won only one of their previous eight games, and they haven't won in back-to-back -back games. They haven't won in three straight games at home. However, over those three straight games, they've only lost once, which kind of is the theme here. Uh, they are just much better at home. They've lost only four of their 16 home games this season, and they've scored at least twice in five of their seven previous home games. So, Bournemouth is not not a team to take lightly whatsoever. Now, however, something really interesting here is that when these two teams clash, they score a ton of goals. Uh, in their previous five meetings here, uh, out of all the games, there's been three total goals. That was the least amount of goals scored. Uh, usually 2-1 is the final score between these two. A lot of that has to do with the fact is that's kind of their, their go-to scores, especially for Burnley. If you're a fan of EPL, you know for the past couple of seasons here, Burnley has literally been of a 2-1 win kind of team cons consistently. But away from home here, I'm not really sure how to take this. Uh, what I am interested in for this game from this slate is goals. I think there is going to be a fair amount of goals this slate. So don't necessarily sleep on on these for th these games uh, just because they uh, aren't packed with uh, huge salaries or huge names so there should still be a lot more goals than, than people should be expecting so for that I, I really won't be looking too much at goalkeepers from this game I don't necessarily think either has a lot of upside uh, because so much has so much both of them have so much risk uh, especially in comparison to uh, the other keepers on the slate so uh, can you again the three game slate anything can happen if I was to take a side here it would definitely be the Bournemouth side of things but they've been so equally bad uh, at the back uh, especially recently I'm just not, not not looking to key into that now as we move forward uh, there isn't really a whole lot to look at here in terms of defense defenders either however someone like Charlie Taylor is always a really low salary low floor kind of play I am a little bit concerned to his salary is at the 4.7 range and it's consistently kept rising despite not necessarily putting out incredible scores now if you are kind of someone who likes to chase uh, narrative trends uh, you can notice he, he's got a nice little up down thing on the go uh, where uh, a lot of these were uh, the home games though so uh, yeah it, it's interesting to see how Burnley can do away this slate. I'm not necessarily looking to pay 4.7 for a team that's not necessarily in good form at the moment, let alone looking at being the worst team of the two when you compare the home away split. Now, when we look at the midfield here, uh, you, you can roll again. The, the issue here is that for Burnley, they're coming back to health, and with more health means less minutes for everyone. In particular, someone like Dwight McNeil, who you should be looking to roll with, uh, and this is definitely the, the kind of score you're looking to get from one goal and this is definitely not the kind of score you're looking to get from one goal again one goal is worth like 12.5 points so uh considering he only got one fantasy point outside of that is a little bit concerning and he isn't seeing 90 minutes so that's a lot of salary to play uh to pay to play this slate with only three games uh so i'm not necessarily interested in that but on the flip side jump all over ryan frazier this slate uh from only 7.8k if you were to take basically Bournemouth, who at home has barely lost this season, and those losses have all come against big six sides, uh, yeah, it, it's just not something I'm necessarily uh, looking to avoid paying uh, this kind of low salary for. Like, take... 
Bournemouth against any other team that is in the big six side, and you're getting a massive discount from 7.8K. Now, on top of that, Burnley basically allow every team to cross at max. Uh, they allow some of the most lead. They, I don't want to say they lead the league, but they're up there in the league for allowing scoring chances, crosses, shots, the whole shebang. So uh, do, you're getting a discount on Ryan Frazier in the slate uh, against who he's playing against at home. Across the board, Ryan Frazier is too cheap. Lock him in this slate, 7.8K. Have no fear. Ryan Frazier is here to get you 20-plus fantasy points this slate. I'm expecting uh, a goal of assist kind of props from him. I'm really excited for that. Uh, now, in uh, terms of, again, jumping back to Burnley, Johan, Ger- B- Johan Berg Goodmanson is someone that is DFS gold, but he isn't seeing the kind of minutes uh, that we need, uh, mostly because he's coming back from injury still. Uh, so I'm not necessarily uh, looking to jump on him, even if he does start. And I think anyone who may not be necessarily familiar with the sport, but have pl- has played DFS soccer all season, will see uh, JBG is starting and want to jump on him. And I, I definitely suggest the opposite. Make sure to fade him because he isn't healthy and he isn't seeing the kind of minutes that people uh, would need uh, to get anything from this slate. And because of that, you have to kind of fade the rest of the Burnley midfield because Ashley uh, Westwood isn't as interesting with Johan Berg Goodmanson playing. Um, and he he is definitely viable for I would definitely take him a GPP this slate I, I wouldn't look for him in cash where Ryan Frazier's multi lock this slate no question and Robbie Brady someone who would whip in 30 crosses a game if he got to start and play 90 minutes now holding to his namesake I was never very fit in soccer either he, his fitness level is very poor so he can barely play 45 minutes as is uh, so don't expect to see him playing very much now up front for Burnley they do have some very interesting options in Ashley Burnley and Chris Wood as they are seeing some pretty decent minutes. However, uh, they just aren't converting a lot of fantasy points, period. So even if uh, they were to score from this, their ceiling would be 15, 16 fantasy points max. Uh, they would need two goals to really make any kind of a drop in the bucket this late. And I think there's just way too many other options like Ryan Frazier to see two points this late. So uh, yeah, paying uh, that isn't really, maybe a thousand less each I would consider it, but uh, not this slate. Now jumping over to Bournemouth, like I said, I'm avoiding uh, the goaltenders. There really isn't a whole lot to look at the back. Nathaniel Klein would be viable if he was getting at least two or three more fancy points a game, but from this, it's just too much of a risk. 4K is unnecessary to pay for someone who isn't even going to get one times their salary worth. Uh, now going into the midfield, uh, like I talked about Ryan Frazier, Junior Stanislas is interesting if he can start getting some minutes. I don't expect it. Uh, he usually takes off Brooks. Uh, now now you can see Brooks has been seeing some interesting minutes back-to-back games. I'm going to chase some Brooks in GPP this slate just because I think uh, Bournemouth do have an incredible ceiling, a team ceiling this slate. So I'm not sure where exactly it's going to come from, but I think it should come uh, from this game. And honestly, I, I don't mind game sack in this game. If you want to take some burns uh, with uh, Ryan Frazier, and we'll talk about a forward here in a second, I really do support that. Two thumbs up. Other way, there we go. Two thumbs up. Uh, but yeah, uh, going into the forwards here, you have Cal Wilson and Josh King. And Cal Wilson and Ryan Frazier has consistently all season been the most viable stack uh, to play. Uh, so. Uh, again, this slate, you're getting them at a small, uh, a small slate, so we don't have to really worry about a lot of competing scripts uh, overtaking them in GPP. In cash, I'm not necessarily keyed in on both. I'd rather just take Ryan Frazier, uh, but uh, I definitely think you can roll with some Callum Wilson and uh, Ryan Frazier in GPP together. Maybe even the three, uh, King, Wilson, and uh, Ryan Frazier. My one concern is minutes on King. I'm uh, definitely not as keyed in on him as I am Wilson and Frazier. Of the three, it goes Frazier, Wilson, King. And King is a very, very distant third. Uh, so, yeah. For cash, Ryan Frazier to the slate, lock him in. Um, I'm not 100% sure how this game will finish, I'll be honest. Uh, I think it could be something like 3 nothing 
Bournemouth, 2 nothing Bournemouth. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Burnley score one or two. So I'll say a 2-1 final, uh, and I'll say Bournemouth side of things. The long and short of it is don't look for keepers this slate. Uh, even though Tom Heaton will probably see the most action out of all keepers this slate, he just carries too much risk because Bournemouth at home, Burnley away is just not what you want to target. 2-1 uh, Bournemouth win at home. Next game on the slate, we have Leicester making the trip to Huddersfield to play Huddersfield Town. Another really interesting game here because Leicester is absolutely garbage away from home and Huddersfield is absolutely garbage, period. So uh, it's kind of interesting which way you want to go with that. However, Leicester has been playing much better as of late. They've won four of the previous five. They're winners of three straight. However, they've won only one of their five away games, uh, one of their previous five away games, excuse me, and uh, that one win came last game against Burnley, uh, who we previously discussed isn't in the best of form at the moment. However, um, the one thing Leicester, or I shouldn't say the one thing, they've got a bunch of things going for them this slate. The big thing they have going uh, for them here is uh, they've actually never lost to Huddersfield. They've won nine of their previous ten games versus Huddersfield, and they've never conceded more than one English Premier League goal in the game to Huddersfield. So even if Huddersfield does score, which would be very unlikely, and I'll discuss that shortly, uh, it's not going to be more than one goal. So the first place you can look for a keeper this slate is Michael at only 5.5k. I do have a little bit of reservations about this. He isn't my favorite keeper play of the slate, but it's bloody obvious like it's completely obvious that Huddersfield are bad Leicester isn't that bad and Smeichel is more than capable of getting a clean sheet or at least keeping this under one goal so three games slate I'm a little bit iffy but uh, I definitely believe that Smeichel is uh, one of my top three keepers probably my second favorite keeper play this slate so I have no issue with Smeichel uh, now moving into the midfield it's tough to say because Huddersfield don't allow a ton of crosses. They just let in a ton of goals, uh, mostly through counterattacks, which I'll talk about here in a second up front. Uh, so, yeah, uh, when you're looking at someone like uh, I prefer Chilwell, uh, maybe uh, Christian Fuchs, uh, but uh, Pereira is... Uh, probably the one that most people are going to gravitate to and when he's only 5.6k it's he's usually six whatever right so uh yeah it's uh it's hard not to play him this slate against Huddersfield. At least in GPP, when you're especially chasing a clean sheet chase, you're definitely going to want Pereira. I'd probably go with one of the other two in cash, though, if I was taking the Smeichel route in cash. Uh, so what I'll say is probably Chilwell. He's been playing a lot better recently, so uh, I'll probably... Uh, he's been much better at home, as with most of Leicester. Yeah, let's just leave it as Michael for now. Uh, the midfield's really the big place to attack this slate. You're going to want James Mass, and that's the first step. The second step is for GPP, you're also going to want Tealmans. Uh, and ideally, if you can, uh, you'd probably want uh, Nidley in the mix as well. Uh, now, Nidley would basically come into play in either GPP if you're taking a full stack or if you're needing a little bit of discount. Uh, you can go either way with this, really. There's a little bit more risk with the Nidley because he definitely doesn't have the upside. Masson has all the upside you need, uh, all the floor you need, but he has seen glimpses of minute issues this season where Nidley has all the consistency you need, all the minutes you need, all the backside you need, but he doesn't really have any sort of upside whatsoever, like at all. So, um it's tough. Like, if you're really chasing the upside, go with Madison. If you just want the discount, go with Nidley. If you're in GPP, take Tealman's with uh, Madison or uh, Madison and Nidley or with Nidley. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, my Lester take in the midfield. I also don't mind Harvey Barnes and Demary Gray, but they, their minutes aren't ideal. Uh, Barnes has been playing really well as of late, too. So, I, I, if you're going to go in GPP, I definitely wouldn't mind Barnes, but that's a lot of risk to take uh, for uh, for that kind of salary this late 6k when you can just spend up a little bit more uh, and get lots of different other options whether on the team or uh, on the slate now up front is really where you want to focus the slate uh, Jamie Vardy um, I, I won't pretend there are some concerns here for minutes for me if uh, he could end up coming off a little bit early uh, than expected. These are the kind of things you have to kind of prepare for in three-game slates because mistakes are way more 
disastrous uh, when it's only three games. So uh, you really have to be a little bit more careful with mints, and you need to be a little bit more perfect when you're searching for a uh, high end. So, yeah, I do like Jamie Vardy, either format, honestly. I prefer him for GPP. Uh, Madison Vardy for GPP. Uh, Madison Vardy, Thielman, Madison Vardy, Nidley, you get the idea. Get three to four of them in there. Uh, maybe even five with the defender. Maybe even six if you want to count Michael as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll for the for the sake of conversation, I'll stick with uh, just Mass and at the moment. But yeah, that's uh, definitely where uh, I would look in terms of Leicester. And uh, like I said, it's going to be a variety party. But the main thing with the variety party is it's usually plus one on the invitation. So you make sure to get plus one on his invitation because when the variety party is in full gear, everyone's having a good time. So yeah, uh, Huddersfield. Really tough to take here. I don't know why last night they started Ben Hamer. They seem to have an affection with him that maybe he's just a really nice guy and Losel isn't. I don't get it because he's not that good of a keeper and the team doesn't play as well in front of him. So Losel is the better keeper. Uh, if Losel starts, I would give him a slight more uptick. Uh, but uh, if it's a uh, Hamer, I have uh, no interest whatsoever. He is not a very good real life keeper nor DFS keeper. I've uh, in terms of the defense, I've got no issues uh, with some of these guys though. Uh, Hadagajan continues to do the doesn't finish zero and doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. I do like uh, the options in Eric Drum uh, and uh, more preferably uh, Chris Lowe. Uh, in fact, uh, Chris Lowe is definitely in cash viable for me this slate. Uh, 4.1K is a little bit more than I'm usually liking to pay for him, but at the same time, he's only, yeah, he, he, he should be 4.5K this slate. So get Chris Lowe into your cash cards. You don't have to worry about because he is on Huddersfield. Now, in terms of GPP, um, yeah, I wouldn't be playing Smichael, uh, but at the same time, I don't mind a Jorgensen, Zanka. He is still the team's leading scorer. Uh, so, yeah, I really don't mind him finding a way back onto the score sheet here. He hasn't been p playing as much lately. It wouldn't surprise me to see him get back into the starting lineup here. And then as you move forward, you have uh, Aaron Moy, 6.8K. He's been absolutely tearing up in the previous weeks. I have no issue. Continue rolling with Aaron Moy in cash. It's a little bit risky uh, going with Madison and Aaron Moy and Chris Lowe, but I think that uh, all three of them are more than cash viable as is if you just ignore the matchup because it is a three game slate so you kind of have to ignore that they're all in the same game uh, so yeah um, in terms of uh, the forwards though you can roll with some Carlin Grant in GPP at only 5.6k uh, he is slate breakable this is the thing now he has shown that he does have the capability to break his slate and he still is super cheap I know he plays in Huddersfield and I know Huddersfield isn't exactly the most exciting go-to here um, Huddersfield are officially relegated I should point that out uh, they are the worst team in the league. They've lost basically every game this season. Uh, 17 of 19 they've lost. Uh, 12 of their previous 15 home games and four straight losses. Uh, they've lost eight of their previous nine home games. And they've scored only seven home goals this season. So, uh, yeah, just stick with the Aaron Moy, Chris Lowe floor. Moy's getting expensive, but he isn't too expensive, so I don't mind it. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Huddersfield will be lucky to score once. Leicester should score more than once. Uh, I like Jamie Vardy to get on the board here, uh, at least for a goal. But uh, James Mass and Ryan Frazier, definitely the two bigger midfield plays of the slate. And uh, you can jump on the Aaron Moy side as well for only 6.8K. Uh, so I'll say a final 3-1 Leicester final. They'll be up 2-1 most of the game and score a goal late. Final game of the slate, we have Crystal Palace traveling to Newcastle. So uh, jumping right ahead here, uh, I have a saying, and the simple is very saying, uh, good defense always beats a good offense. 
a bad offense will always beat a bad defense. And what we have here is a good defense going up against a good offense. And that good defense is Newcastle, and that good offense is Palace. So, strangely, Palace, as soon as they get away from home, they're a really good team. They've won four of their previous seven away games, and they've won back-to-back away. They've lost only one of their previous five away, and they haven't lost in uh, three straight away. So... They are coming into this not only in really decent form, but as well, really good away form. Now, the big concern for them away is that they concede a ton of goals. They've conceded at least twice in eight of their 13 away games, uh, previous away games, excuse me. And uh, interesting enough, uh, in eight of their previous 10 away games, both teams have scored. So... Uh, I'm expecting uh, them to allow goals, and it'll be interesting to see here if they can score. That's that's the big thing. Uh, they are going to concede, though. That that's my main thing. <laughs> that that that's my big uh, my big point. Uh, so yeah, let's let's break this down a little bit. So yeah, I, I'm not interested in the Guiada, Hennessy, Speroni, whatever, whoever. Um, I think a lot of people will be, especially after the Spurs game last slate and they saw the 14 fantasy points. They're thinking, wow, let's just keep jumping right on that. And that's just not going to happen. Newcastle will put three to five shots on that top and tops, excuse me. And uh, if uh, one goes in, he's toast. So yeah, I'm not interested in uh Guiada this slate. I'll let other people jump on that. Now, Juan Bensaki, you can use from 4.3 K. I do think that is a little bit viable. I uh, just he does have floor he hasn't been as good in recent weeks so i'm not as keyed in as i am some other options here but uh definitely uh he do- does fit the the bill excuse me now i will be rolling with some zaha and gpp this slate uh probably roughly 30 percent zaha i would say in my gpp this slate uh, I think he is super viable for a goal, and only at on a he has been playing really well as of late. And on a three game slate, uh, he definitely has some of the higher end skill of the slate. So it's it's hard to ignore his skill set, uh, even from 8.4k away from home, because like I said, Palace just tend to score a lot more goals away from home, and they are better away from home. And I, I'm not necessarily interested in Townsend. Uh, you probably could roll some Milicevic Millie if you want some Millie this slate from 7.4K. Again, I expect a little bit more of a pedestrian outing. Newcastle allow a lot of shots. They don't allow a ton of crosses. So, yeah, I'm not necessarily looking at Townsend or Milicevic to whip in the crosses, but I am looking for Milicevic to always draw the free kick and Zaha to dribble and score goals, which Newcastle are very susceptible to. And up front, it's simple fades for me, whether it's minutes, whether it's skill. uh, There's just no real reason to... Uh, go chasing waterfalls up front for uh, Palace because guys just aren't going to see enough time to have a big enough impact or they just aren't skilled enough to have a big enough impact. Uh, so, yeah, jumping over to Newcastle. Newcastle, incredible form at the moment, incredible home team. They've won five straight home games, and they've scored at least twice in those five games. And in three of those five games, they've kept a clean sheet. And in only one of their 16 home games this season they've drawn. So if you're looking for a result, look to a Newcastle home game. And uh, going back to the Palace, Palace has drawn only twice away from the season. So if you're looking for a result, look at a Palace away game. So I'm, I'm expecting a result. Definition number one of this game, I'm expecting a result. One of these keepers is walking away with the win, considering Newcastle concedes so many away from home, and Newcastle has been so good at... uh, Sorry, considering Palace concedes so many away from home, and Newcastle has been so good at home, I have to assume Debraca is the top keeper play of this slate. Uh, That's just uh, my my take. Uh, 4.8K, you can't go wrong. Uh, He's going to have a ceiling because... Palace are good enough to do things, but they aren't good enough to uh, completely blow him out. And especially when we're looking at if Huddersfield score on Leicester, they're not putting any more than two or three shots on goal. So there's not going to be anything for Smichael to make back what he allowed. So 
Uh, and just, just to, I think it's just the safest route to bracket this slate, jump on him at home for only 4.8K. Uh, now, in terms of the defensive options, obviously, I want to go with Shara. If you want to see something scary, check back to the qualifiers uh, a few weeks ago. Shara got knocked out cold and he swallowed his tongue. And uh, a player from the opposition team actually had to pull his tongue out of his throat uh, to prevent him from dying. And then he kept playing. He played the rest of the game. He was allowed to come back on the field and finish the game. There's a huge debate going on right now whether there should be the blue tent like the NFL. But, uh, anyways, uh, don't sleep on the Newcastle wingbacks. You're probably going to want one. But what I'm really queuing on here this slate, especially since it's a three-game slate, is to jump on one of the center backs. Whether it's someone like Kieran Clark, Lascelles, Lejeune, uh, whether it's Dummett or Manquillo at wide, I don't hate either of those, especially Manquillo, who's probably my choice for cash. But for GPP, do not sleep on the Newcastle center backs. I am Betting my king of the pitch future, my uh, back heel future, that there will be a Newcastle center back goal this late. There, I, I'm making the claim now. Uh, so yeah, uh, Manquillo though for cash, you can't go wrong there. And then the midfield, I'm... Um, I know a lot of people are going to be jumping on Matt Ritchie, but his minutes have seen a massive uh, downturn uh, lately. So I'm not necessarily, again, like I said, you have to be more perfect when you're looking for that high end. And when it's only three games slate, these these dots, these uh, blips in the radar become huge issues. Uh, so, yeah, I'm uh, not looking to cue in on Matt Ritchie like other people will be, and I'll stick to the Lester Huddersfield and Ryan Frazier for my midfield. Now, Alberon, I think, is uh, definitely viable from 6.7K. Uh, cash or GPP uh, does not matter. I don't think he necessarily has a huge ceiling, so I'd probably keep him to uh, cash. Uh, but for uh, GPP, uh, definitely roll some Alberon. Uh, Ronda is in the same boat. If you're looking to take a decent stack, uh, jump on the Newcastle stack with Almiron, Ronda, and Richie. I have no issue with that. Maybe even taking some Manquillo to uh, the four down it. Uh, maybe even Manquillo, a center back, and uh, Debraca. So go like the full spread and then fill it in with a little bit of Leicester and pop in a Bournemouth player uh, for a chase of a goal. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Final score, 2 nothing Newcastle. Uh, they'll be winning 1-0 most of the game, and much like uh, the previous uh, Les uh, the Leicester game, Newcastle will score late and win me a GPP. <laughs> Called it. Maybe you too. I don't mind if you win. That's fair. Uh, that's fair too. So yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. Rotopros.com. Get over. Check us out. Top right-hand corner. Articles. Drop down. Uh, check them out. Tons of free content for all sorts of different sports. Come over. Sign up. Get involved in our Slack chat. Our MLB is absolutely pumping right now. We're having a blast. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. Best of luck this weekend. And uh, I think we got some Champions League coming up. So uh, we'll be talking to Champions League next week. Take care.